By this point, we've endured five Spider-Man films, three Peter Parkers, and one Civil War cameo. But finally, we have our definitive Spider-Man. As anyone who's seen Civil War can attest, Tom Holland's interpretation of both Parker and Spider-Man are second to none. With Homecoming only a year away, we look at the five things that Marvel need to do to ensure that it is the best Spider-Man film to date. By now, we've been through three Green Goblins, The Lizard, Electro, Rhino, Doc Ock, and Venom. For Homecoming, we'd like to see Marvel try a new villain. Previous villains have included high school or college professors or lifelong friends. So we'd like to see Marvel try something a little bit different. If we could also avoid the stereotypical person who speaks their alter ego, that would be just swell. What do I do? Instruct him in the matters of loss and pain. Make him suffer. Make him wish he were dead. Yes. Peter was right. I miscalculated. I couldn't have miscalculated. It was working, wasn't it? Yes. That changing like the snake, I might be free to cast off flesh wherein I dwell confined. Would you give it all up? After all you know you can do. All the power you feel. <laughs> Who's that? Son. I'm here. And once I've got you, Marvel, please can we not set up the Sinister Six in this movie? Just present us nice, relatable people so that in future films we can see how far they've fallen when they descend into Crazy Town. Civil War was the first time that we truly felt the films had found that perfect amalgamation of nerdy Peter Parker and smack talking Spider Man. Hey, everyone. Yeah, we don't really it's need to start a conversation. Oh, Captain? Big fan. Previous films relied heavily on Parker's alter ego. This time around, we'd like to see a more character based story that relies on that more than the action packed spectacle. We really enjoyed what we saw in his 10 minutes of fame in Captain America. And we really hope Homecoming builds upon this solid foundation they've set for themselves. We want to see a Peter that grows and changes as a person, and not just dependent upon his troubles of being Spider-Man. Don't just have the film be about Peter Parker's love life as his alter ego fights some CGI-based monster. No chosen one magic blood nonsense. The appeal of Spider-Man is that he is the everyman superhero, so please, don't take that away from us this time. Also, none of this please. One cutscene from Civil War must have been Spider-Man signing the Sokovia Accords. This is obviously quite a big deal, as it means that he has waived his rights to fighting crime independently. And if he does so, he could be arrested for doing it. We already know Robert Downey Jr. has been confirmed for this film. We believe it's Tony being sent by the government as a US official to stop Peter's crime fighting in New York. After all, the US probably don't want an unchecked superhero who can go toe to toe with Earth's mightiest heroes, just web swinging around the city stopping subway trains, and being an all-round public menace. Peter's past actions should have an adverse effect on him now. Most of his tech has been built by Tony Stark, and fans of the comic book Civil War can attest to how much trouble that gives him. Let's hope we see similar ramifications in the MCU. Homecoming is likely a nod to the web slinger's rightful return to his home, and is also likely a reference to the high school dance at the end of his year. Since Peter's about 16 years old in this film, it'll be when he's most rebellious at school and his superhero lives. <laughs> Let's see Peter stick it to the system and old man Tony Stark in the best ways possible. Director John Watts hasn't made much before, but what we've seen we like for its creativity and its originality. You'll never see a gangster shoot out in quite the same way after seeing a load of Muppets shoot themselves to death in The Fuzz. We hope that Homecoming reinforces the importance of Peter Parker and that Watts has some truly original ideas for the high school genre in the superhero universe. Please can it not be another love story about Gwen Stacy or Mary Jane? Just make sure to leave room for all the quips and one-liners you could shake a stick at. Boss, your wife's in the line. She said she lost a checkbook. Thanks for the good news.
In case we haven't been clear, we really loved Peter Parker. He was funny, but awkward, endearing, but honest. His wide-eyed view of the world has the potential to birth a new perspective on the MCU, especially in a world where the current jaded superheroes we have are at war with one another. Peter's remarks on bullies is very reminiscent of a young Steve Rogers, and we're very much looking forward to a film that tests his morals in the way the Captain America films did for Steve. Let's see a film that dives into a character rejected by both the school and the superhero establishments. These unique aspects could make a character more true to the comics than ever before. But more importantly, let's have it be fun, okay? So, do you agree with our points on Spider-Man Homecoming? What are you looking forward to most? Please let us know in the comments, and for more from Easy Degree, like and subscribe.